Everyone's heard about spring cleaning, but what about fall? Fall cleaning, it's The Real Estate Show. Welcome to The Real Estate Show. My name is Rick Naples. I'm the owner broker of Zone Realty LLC. You zone your home. I'm filming today from the executive office of Zone Realty in Plainville, Connecticut, and I want to talk about fall cleaning. We all know spring cleaning. You know, when the winter is all over, we get ready to open up our houses and let some fresh air in, and we make that list of our spring cleaning chores. Well, this time of the year, we have some special fall cleaning chores that we should pay attention to. And on this show, I'm going to share a lot of those ideas with you and maybe a few things that you haven't thought of. Fall gives us the opportunity to clean some areas of the home that we usually don't get to. We got to remember that the house now is going to be closed up for the winter months and we're going to be turning the heat on. So we have to pay a little bit of extra attention Because as I said, in the springtime, you can open up those windows and air out the house. In the winter, you don't really have all that much choice to do that. I mean, you don't want to let the heat out, you know? So you want to make sure that you pay attention to specific areas throughout the house that you want to clean. You want to be very, very aware of smells in the house. You know, smells tend to gather in a closed house because they have no way of ventilating out. So you want to make sure that those areas that need to be cleaned because of potential smells are kept nice and clean or as best you possibly can. Let's take a look at this little video that I put together about a fall cleaning list or chore list that you can do around the house. And then I'll be back to talk a little bit more about some ideas for fall cleaning. talking about fall cleaning here on the real estate show and how it's a little bit different than say your spring cleaning was. One of the things you need to pay attention to of course in the fall is because your home is closed up you want to be very aware of smells and smells can come from everywhere in the house especially as I said the windows and the doors are all shut up. So you want to make sure that you spend extra attention cleaning those areas that you might not normally pay attention to. The list that I showed earlier just kind of gave you some general ideas of those things you should pay attention to and can clean during the fall season. And I'm going to show a list a little later on in the show which talks about deep cleaning ideas. Things that you really can get into and really clean that you may not pay attention to 
or may clean maybe once every other year or something along those lines. We're now heading into the holiday season. So of course we have different things and different ways we're going to look at our homes during the holidays. You know, I believe Halloween's going to come along. You know, you have Thanksgiving where you're going to have friends and relatives maybe coming over to the house. There's the winter holiday season for things like, you know, Christmas and so on and so forth. So it changes the aspects of the home and it changes what you're going to look at when you're looking to clean. I'm going to present a list a little later on in the show about deep cleaning ideas. But what I want to talk about is some general cleaning ideas. We all like the wipe down surfaces and that's basically what we do. I mean, we, we do a lot of cleaning normally. Uh, we all do it. You know, we wash the car, we clean our laundry, we clean ourselves. Uh, you know, we clean around where the pets are and so on and so forth. It's really important as far as cleaning the house, especially when the house is going to be going on the market for sale. You know, I talked on previous real estate shows about how buyers, when they come to look at your home, their motivation is to look at the house. But what happens is people tend to get distracted very easily. So if they go into a home and things are not clean and tidy, that distracts them. They're looking at the mess as opposed to looking at the house. Um, again, you know, it's, it's interesting as to what buyers are going to key into. Let's look at this quick little to-do list that I put together, and I'll be back to talk some more about fall cleaning. talking here on the real estate show about fall cleaning and how that may differ from spring cleaning chores. There are a number of different things that you do during the fall that are different than you might do at other points during the year. And one of the big things you do is what I call the switchover. Now what's the switchover? Well the switchover is changing from your spring and summer things to your fall and winter things. This is where you go through your closets and maybe you put away the short sleeve shirts and you bring out the long sleeve shirts. This is where you check out your winter coats and your boots and where your shovels are and get the snow plow ready and so on and so forth as you get ready to head into the colder season. And it becomes really important that you stay very organized when you're doing that. I mentioned on another show how buyers, when they're going through a home, they really like to go through the home. They'll open up closets and they'll look in cabinets and so on and so forth. Not necessarily because they're being nosy about your stuff, but they're trying to gauge, does this have the room in the storage that I'm looking for? Will my things fit in it? And so on and so forth. So you kind of want to make sure that you organize that. You know, buy some boxes, put your spring and summer things away, fold them up, stick them in the boxes, store the boxes in the attic or put them in the garage or in that storage area in the basement, wherever it might be, so you can unclutter. 
you know, don't just push all the spring and summer stuff to one side of the closet so you can bring out the fall stuff and have an overstuffed closet. I'm guilty of that. But you just want to make sure that you thin out and make things look like they have a lot of room. You know, when it comes to major cleaning chores, uh, I make a list of all the things that I need to do, and then I try to knock them off during the course of the week or a weekend or whatever it might be. And, and sometimes when I put the list together, I look at the amount of stuff I want to do and I'm exhausted before I even get started. What I want to talk about now is what I call deep cleaning. Some of the older homes have a lot of tile that's up through the house. It could be your tiled floors. Sometimes there's tiled kitchen counters. You know, the tile of the bathroom, the backsplashes, and so on and so forth. When you're doing a deep cleaning, one of the things you really should pay attention to is the grout that's in between the tiles. You know, doing a surface wipe is great to keep the floor clean, but if the grout is dirty, it makes the whole floor look dirty. It's the same thing when you have a tiled bathroom area, especially around the shower. You want to make sure you spend additional attention to cleaning that grout. One of the other things we tend to overlook is our faucets. In some towns we have hard water and over time you start to get a little bit of calcium or rust buildup around your faucets. It's really important to take the time to clean that to make sure that everything's nice and shiny and presentable. Because again, as I said, buyers key into the weirdest things. And I mentioned earlier laundry. Now obviously everybody does laundry, some of us do it on a daily basis, some of us wait till the weekends and so on and so forth. If you're putting your house on the market and you have a feature like a laundry room, or even if you just have the washer and dryer in the basement somewhere, Make sure that area is clean and tidy. In fact, best is to make sure that that area looks not only clean and tidy, but also looks very usable. Wipe down the top of the washing machine. You know, make sure that there's no uh, soap uh, splatter or wherever that's on. Just wipe that down. You know, clean out the dryer. Vacuum all around the washer and dryer units. Make sure that if there's any storage shelves in the area that you put all your laundry supplies in that it's neat and organized. Because again, that might be a feature that attracts the buyer. Buyers, when they come into homes, as I said, key into a number of different things. They're supposed to be there to look at your house. Sometimes they end up looking at your stuff. On previous real estate shows, I talked about cleaning to the point of not washing things or dusting things, but cleaning up the presentation of the house, you know, reducing some of the clutter that's in the house, and so on and so forth. And what's very important is to also address the front porch. 
or the entrance to the home. Because this is the way people are coming in, and as they walk into the house, what are they seeing? You know, I'm sitting here at my desk at the executive offices of Zone Realty in Plainville, Connecticut, and I'm talking here about the fall and cleaning chores that you're going to do during this fall season. And one of the things that's mentioned in the deep cleaning list uh, that I always forget is plants. You know, behind me here I have a, a fake tree. Uh, it's a lovely tree. I like it very much. But every once in a while, I have to remember, I do have to take the time to dust the leaves because the leaves will gather dust. And it's just one of those deep cleaning type things that I don't think of often, but I need to do once in a while. If you have any kind of fake plants throughout your house, that's one of the little things that you want to kind of pay attention to to make sure that you wipe those leaves off and make sure that they're looking their best. Because if they're in an area that's going to focus the eye. You don't want people focusing in how dirty the plant is. You want them focusing in how clean the area is, and so on and so forth. But one of the other things is your rugs. We all vacuum our rugs. We all spot clean the rugs. Well, usually in the fall, it's a great opportunity to take advantage of any kind of incentives that might be out there to have your rugs professionally cleaned. You know, go into the winter with the rugs all clean from the summer mess and so on and so forth. And then look at doing that again in the spring when the winter is all over. Light is very important in the fall. You know, the days are getting short. So during the daytime, you want to let as much natural light as possible into the home. You want to clean those windows. And the other thing, too, as I'll make mention, is holiday decorations. When you do decorate your homes for the holiday, make sure that your decorations are put out in such a way where they're not going to impede the ability for people to walk through the home. You know, we all know about those oversized Christmas trees. You know who I'm talking about. So anyways, just make sure that when you do do your decorations that you're not blocking any pathways so that buyers can get through the home. Let's take a look at this presentation, and I'll be back with some final comments on the section of the show I call the Real Estate Mailbag.
This is the portion of the real estate show I call the real estate mailbag. It's my opportunity to address questions that are sent to me here at the real estate show or just talk about basic comments, maybe conversations I've had when I'm out and about in the general public. I got an email recently that was talking about cleaning the house or getting the house ready to put on the market and what areas of the home should be paid attention to the most. And I'm big guy on curb appeal. You know, when a house goes on the market, a lot of buyers are going to see the pictures on the internet. Some will do what's called drive-bys. They're actually going to get in the car and drive into the neighborhood and drive by the house that's up for sale. And before they even make that appointment to go in and walk through the house, they kind of start making some pre-decisions. Is it a home that they're interested in? Do they want to take a look at the inside? So you want to make that first impression the best you possibly can. And I recommend the exercise that you go out at the street, be careful, and you look at your home from street side and just see what's appealing about the home. What can you do looking at the home for its curb appeal to make the house stand out? Are there trees or bushes that need to be groomed? Or is there mulch that needs to be replaced? Are there railings that need to be repainted? Does the front door look presentable? How about the windows, the roof line, the gutters, and things along those lines? Taking a look at that and making sure all of that area is in proper shape, that it's clean, and it's presentable, will attract the buyer's eye to the home and not to let's say, a dirty, the dirty areas. My name is Rick Naples. This has been The Real Estate Show. I thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.